Welcome to another video for chemistry. In this video, I'm going to be discussing percent mass composition and how to get from that to empirical formula and then a molecular formula. So the video previous to this just deals with finding the percent mass composition. And in this one, we take it a step, a couple of steps further and uh, see what we can find from, um, from percent mass composition. So one of the first things we want to discuss is what is an empirical formula? Okay, it's the lowest terms of a mole to mole ratio of a given compound. Okay, so it is not, empirical formulas are not molecular formulas. So it's not the final, the final goal. Empirical formulas are a means to an end. Okay, the end is to, to get what the actual molecular formula is of a compound. Okay, so um, what we're going to deal with first is finding an empirical formula. How do we do that? Okay. And the steps that are, I'm showing you are the steps that we're going to be taking to finding the uh, empirical and then finally the uh, molecular formula. So we'll, we'll start off first with the ma uh, mass percent, which we will then convert into moles. And then we will use those moles um, and divide by the smallest moles to find the mole ratio of the element. Okay, And then from that, we will find an empirical formula which is again the lowest common terms for a uh, formula of a compound and then we will find the molar mass of that of what we we're trying to look for and use that to find the uh, molecular formula okay now I know it seems all complicated and there's a lot of steps to it but um, just like anything else uh, let's just dive into a question so you can actually see this play out All right. so this is the question that we're going to be dealing with ascorbic acid or vitamin C cures scurvy it is composed of 40.92 percent carbon 4.58% hydrogen and 54.5% uh, oxygen by mass. So in this problem, we're already given the percentages that each element contributes to the overall mass. Our goal is to use this information and to determine the empirical formula. So how can we convert from mass percent to moles? All right, so again, we're being given the percent. So the very fact that we're being given a percent, usually percents deal with uh, like, for example, if I were to say um, 100% of something, you know that that 100% is dealing with the en entirety of that particular uh, thing. So because we're dealing with percents, we know that we can be, we, we're dealing with, uh, let's say, uh, just to make the number a nice round number, 100. Okay, so we can assume that um, we have 100 grams of each of these, uh, of, of this particular compound. So if we have 100 grams of this particular compound, right and we want to convert uh, we first need to convert to grams so that we can go to moles we can go ahead and assume that 40.92 percent and 4.58 and 54.5 we can assume that we're using 100 grams so we can just go ahead and convert straight through into grams each of these percents so I end up with 40.92 grams from 40.92 percent okay so this is the easiest and, and uh, most logical way to just go ahead and convert everything from a percent from that unit to a unit that we can actually work with uh, in our problem. So going from percent to grams. Okay, and we don't violate any mathematical laws or, or conservation of mass uh, rules by doing this. Um, and just by the fact that we're using percent, we're, we're able to convert straight through into grams because of that. Okay, all right. So. Now that we have grams for each of these elements, we want to convert grams into moles. So I'm going to find the molar ratio, the most appropriate ratio uh, to convert these grams into moles. So if I look at the top one, for example, 40.92 percent, uh, I'm sorry, 40.92 grams of carbon, to make that into, uh, convert that gram into mole, I use the molar ratio of one mole of carbon to 12.01 grams of carbon. Because again, go to the periodic table. I've made videos on how to convert grams into moles. You see the molar mass of carbon in the periodic table is 12.01 grams. And then, of course, that's one mole. So um, having the grams in the denominator position will allow me to then get rid of 40.92 grams, get rid of that grams unit to uh, convert into moles. Okay, so for each of these, I, ha I have found the appropriate molar ratio for each of these to go from grams to moles, and I end up with these moles for each of these. Okay, so these are my new subscripts now for this element. Okay, I'll just give you a second to kind of take a look at this. Um, so basically what I have here, three point, I have 3.407 moles of carbon, 
and I have 4.54 moles of hydrogen, and then I have 3.407 moles of oxygen. Okay, so these are the number of moles that I'm dealing with in this particular molecule. I don't know what this molecule looks like. All I know is what elements are in it and what percentage of elements, and now I know how many moles of each of these elements are inside of this molecule, okay? So you'll notice on the left too, that now I'm on the second step. I've gone from mass percent to now having moles of each of these elements. Okay, so why did I do that? Okay, well, finding out the moles of each element, okay, you can see here this is what the element would look, would look like. You have the carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. Okay, and in the bottom you see the subscripts. 3.407, 5.54 for hydrogen, and 3.407 again for oxygen. These moles are actually now my subscripts, okay? So these are the subscripts for this particular element. Now, there's a problem with this though. You'll notice that the, these numbers are not whole numbers. They're very messy decimal numbers. So what I can do here is I can actually divide. My next step would be to divide by the lowest of these, uh, of these numbers. Okay, so divide by the smallest number of moles because I need to convert these numbers into whole number integers. So the smallest of these numbers is 3.407. Okay, so then I would divide all of those moles by 3.407. Okay, and what would happen is I would get this number, which is a little bit cleaner. Okay, so I, you notice that in carbon I have one, and in oxygen I have one, but I still have a decimal number in hydrogen, 1.33. My goal, my goal is to convert this number, 1.33, into a whole number. Okay, so I need to think, how many times would I need to multiply this number for it to become a whole number? Okay, now if I multiply it two times, I get 2.66, so that's not quite what I want. But if I multiply it by 3, I get 3.99. 3.99 is actually close enough for me to round up to 4. So that number would now become a 4. But here's the thing. If I change one of those subscripts, I need to change the rest of them too. So I multiply them by that same integer, 3, and now I have what's called an empirical formula. You'll notice that each one of these subscripts is now a whole number integer, which is exactly what I want. And this is the smallest whole number integer for this particular molecule. Okay, this is called your empirical formula. So the smallest whole number ratio would be C3, H4, and O3. But again, keep in mind, an empirical formula is not a molecular formula. In other words, this is not necessarily, okay, this is not necessarily how, uh, what the true ratios of this molecule actually is. Okay, this is just the smallest whole number ratio. So the question is, how do I convert now an empirical formula into a molecular formula? All right, to determine that, I need to determine the ratio between the molecular formula, my MM and the uh, uh, numerator position. I need to determine the ratio between my molecular formula and my empirical, empirical um, molar mass. Okay, so I have the molar mass of the molecule, and then I'll have the empirical molar mass. Now. The molar mass of this molecule, let me back up, you're usually going to be given this molar mass, okay? In the question, you're going to be given what the molar mass of that molecule is. And our question, it didn't give that to us. So I just did a simple Google search for ascorbic acid and found that this was the molar mass. Okay, so keep in mind, this, this information will typically be given to you in a question. Or you'll at least be given some clue as to how to find it. Okay, so the molar mass of ascorbic acid is 176.12 grams per mole. All right. Now, if I find the molar mass, the empirical form, uh, the empirical formula molar mass, I have carbon, which is 12.01 grams per mole, times three because there's three carbons. I have four hydrogens times its molar mass, times or plus uh, the molar mass of oxygen times three because there's three oxygens present. When I add these together, I end up with 88.062. So here's another clue to tell you that, hey, look, I actually don't have the molar mass of this molecule. I don't have the true formula for this molecule because when I look at the molar mass of the molecule absorbic acid, I see that it's 176.12. But the molar mass of my empirical formula is 88.062. So that tells me that I don't have the exact amount that I need. 
So what is the ratio for this? This is a 1.99 ratio or basically a 2 ratio telling us that the actual formula, the actual molar mass of ascorbic acid is two times bigger than my empirical formula. So then all I would have to do is multiply each of these subscripts by two and that gives me my molecular formula. So this is actually what ascorbic acid looks like. It's not C3H4O3, it's actually C6H8O6. Okay, so I hope this video was helpful in finding the um, going from mass percent to empirical formula and then finally going to molecular formula. We'll do many practice problems in class so that you can get the hang of this, but hopefully this video will help, um, help you when you're studying at home. All right, good luck in your studying.